Hi everyone. Um, my name is Susan. I um, was asked by Biomed Central to talk specifically about um, building expertise in journal publishing in Africa um, because I work for African Journals Online. <laughs> um, <laughs> briefly, African Journals Online is a, a peer-reviewed <coughs> African-published scholarly research journal aggregator um, and we've been working uh, first of all, as an initiative under INASP, um, began in 1998, um, and subsequently in, as a non-profit organization in South Africa, actually in Grahamstown, um, since 2005, on trying to um, increase access to African research online. So, the three... Um, pillars of, um, that are necessary for the survival and development um, of economies in developing nations are science, technology, and publication. Um, and a lot of work and a, and a lot of discourses around increasing capacity in, in research. Um, and related to that, um, the absorption of um, international research by higher education institutions on the continent and the production capacity. Um, <laughs> But not much is spoken regarding the, the publishing um, capacity. And really, it's one of the three aspects, as uh, highlighted by um, Seliger Mayer, um, as being of critical importance to the role that higher education plays in economic development and poverty alleviation. And this is obviously particularly important um, on the African continent. Um, the external connections of our divide from the rest of the world in terms of economic, uh, in, sorry, in terms of internet um, connectivity are, are decreasing. So the challenge is really starting to um, emerge as being within our own countries and within our own institutions. Um, this is a, a kind of a very simple table of showing the kind of the ecosystem, if you will, of um, scholarly um, endeavor. Um, showing that it's couched in cultural, political, economic, legal, and ethical system, um, and showing that the creators are, are also users of the content that is provided. Um, I'm going to be talking specifically of, on the, the left of the two pink boxes um, on the, the side of the, the publishers and the, the e-journals, the aggregators, um, open access, a little bit on institutional repositories. Possibly a, a nicer, more African way of, of showing that is, a, is this symbol from uh, West Africa, which uh, relates to sort of knowledge and lifelong education, and it comes from um, the weave of cloth. Um, and by the way, I think the two ever drew up, drew up the schedule for um, the, this two-day um, Biomed Open Access Africa conference was uh, quite good in drawing out some of those main threads of the, of the cloth um, of scholarly communication from Africa. Um, one of the important and abiding areas and threads in that cloth is, is going to be formal scholarly communication um, and, and scholarly journals. Um, and then trying to talk about the 31 countries that Agile works with and the 440 plus journals it's really important to note that, there, that these countries, these journals, these contexts, these institutions are by no means homogenous. Um, so bear in mind, I'm going to be making some generalizations because it's useful to do so, but it's, it's really important to note that there's, you, it, 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 it's dangerous territory to make generalizations when it comes to Africa. Um, there's a huge range of journal types that we, that we work with from the continent. Um, some of the professional kind of old style um, publishers, um, some professional commercial open access publishers, few of these. Um, society publishers, society journals, um, university press. Um, but the vast majority of journals that we work with are what OASPA terms scholar publishers, scholar journals. And these guys are caught between a rock and a hard place because they want to publish relevant, quality, local African research local is probably not the best word. But those guys producing the best research from the continent are wanting to save their work for publication in the prestige journals 
often overseas. Um, so how do you, the, the journals on an African level try to get to the point that they are considered worthy vehicles for the publishing of Africa's best research? I, I note that it is, on the one hand, arguable that as long as the research is appearing somewhere, for example, on, on a Biomed Central journal, <laughs> um, that, that is the main thing, because it's getting out there and it's getting disseminated. But at the same time, there's an important argument to make that um, the kind of the ecosystem that supports um, scholarly education on the continent is weakened every time sort of research outputs are published outside of the continent, or a research journal is taken over by an, a large international publisher, instead of those skills and those processes remaining in the expertise on the continent. Um, in general, scholar journals, I think, are doing an astounding job giving the challenges that they're facing. Um, but one of the areas that they are particularly aware of as important that they are unable to cover for themselves when it comes to judgments and perceptions of their quality is the kind of finessed appearance of the end product of a journal, whether it's <laughs> online or in print. So particularly language, most of the, the researchers are publishing in a colonial language, which is a second or a third language, um, English or French mostly. Um, but few of these really small journals that are published out of faculties or out of individual university um, departments have um, the funds or the person power to have language editors or even the available skills. Translation is extremely expensive. Um, and they don't necessarily have the skills in formatting, layout, typesetting, all of the finesse little things that actually are not only internationally but within the continent used to judge quality of, of research outputs. Um, so as a result, African journals often go overseas for um, journals publishing services. Um, Medno in India, for example, um, and authors also. These things can happen on the continent, so there is a gap there. Um, one of the kind of major assumptions that a lot of us in Africa make is that it's all about the bucks. $100 trillion, that's a <laughs> little parody of a Zimbabwean banknote there. Um, local journals struggle to survive and have very poor visibility due to the high costs of publication and dissemination. And certainly, resource constraints and, and cash flow constraints are, are an important consideration. Um, but there are lots of um, ways that the continent, the countries and the institutions um, are already managing to share and disseminate some of the formal research that we are doing. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go through in the next few slides um, each of these areas, um, institutional support, quality indicators, um, skills and development training of um, authors, editors, reviewers, um, the tools that are available um, to make journal, quality journal publishing easier and cheaper, um, the role, quite important role that aggregators are playing um, on the continent and various other service non-profit service providers um, and partnerships. So in terms of institutional support, um, we work with scholar journals that complain that they don't get adequate support from the university administrators and the policy makers in, in their countries. Um, but what is happening in some successful institutions is, the, is that there's a lot of uh, pressure from those journals and from the libraries uh, to try and help the institution create uh, amenable conditions for the, for the journals to actually um, publish and be, be supported in their work. Um, there, it's a, a lot of emphasis at the moment has been placed on institutional repositories in African universities, and that's important, but it's not enough. The gold open access journals, in fact, journal publishing in general, still needs to happen. Still, the quality of that still needs to be boosted. Um, it's quite important to foster a research culture, but a research communication culture as well. Again, emphasizing the dissemination aspect. It doesn't happen automatically um, in Africa. It never has. Possibly um, in, developed, in the developed world, it used to happen sort of more automatically by the commercial publishers before they um, started putting up their prices in the serial crisis. Um, but now we have to pay 
express explicit attention to that, that part of the cycle, that part of the process. So first of all, we need to establish what, what are the criteria that these journals are being judged by in terms of their, their quality. The journals themselves need to know what it is that they should be striving to and working towards. If they don't know, they can't attain them. Um, so there's a, an organization, SURF, that is kind of working towards this and some of the things that have been talked about so far um, is the, making the peer review process transparent. Um, also, importantly, the transparency of the masthead the names and contact details of all of the people who are actively involved in the editorial board. So those can be verified. Um, also, one of the ways to kind of look at the quality of a journal is, is look at what aggregators and what indices have included that journal. Um, and then another set of quality criteria needs to kind of be established and looked at for professional open access journal publishers. Um, I'll get onto that a little later. So, again, the awareness of the quality criteria. Um, partly that involves training, um, making editors aware of it. Partly it can be um, editors teaching themselves, although for the scholar publishers it's really important to bear in mind that this process of journal publishing is over and above, outside and beyond, a normal eight-hour academic workload. For, for the most part, these people are not professional publishers. They are professional academics, and they're trying to run a journal on top of that. And they're trying to um, attain the standards that, will, that are comparable to professional journal publishers in the rest of the region and in the rest of the world. So it, it's actually an enormous ask. Um, so, and one of the sort of specific practical areas that uh, within journal publishers um, needs help, they need help in, in uh, things like what, what is Creative Commons and applying it. The majority of the um, 140 open access journals that Agile works with from the continent are gold OA without any restrictions at all, without any kind of creative license applied to them. Um, that's part of the overhaul of the, uh, and renewal of the um, policy environment in general in higher education that needs to um, happen in most countries on the continent. Um, in some of the, the older, um, prestigious, reputable, and considered high quality journals from the continent, um, they've kind of stayed with their old practices because that's what brought them their, their prestige. Um, they haven't embraced online publishing, they haven't embraced open access, and they've kind of become stuck what we're finding is that after the, some of the editors' training workshops that AJAR does, um, the students' journals from those institutions go back and teach the senior academics in their institution about how to use um, online publishing software and what open access is and so on. So it's quite an interesting um, age reversal of the born digital kids <laughs> helping their, their senior staff um, embrace the new um, technologies that are available. There's also a real demand for peer-to-peer -peer learning. One of the things that Agile finds in our editors' workshops, we do regional editors' workshops, and we draw together um, journals from, say, five different countries, 15 different publications, and one of the things that is most enjoyed is the, peer, is the opportunity to learn from, one, from one's peers, um, interact with them, debate issues that people are coming up against. And, um, we're going to be continuing that in, um, in a forum, allowing those debates and discourses to continue after those workshops. Um, so as I said earlier, scholar, scholar journals, some of them are actually paying uh, Medno in India for those sort of finessing services. So that's why I was saying that money isn't necessarily the, the biggest <laughs> obstacle. They can afford to pay for these things to be done. There just isn't just an equivalent service happening in Africa. It's possibly a business opportunity for somebody. Um, African journals and authors are uh, moving to overseas publishers. Um, some models of that are co-publishing uh, so that the, the skills and the support services remain um, in the countries of, of origin of those journals, but sometimes they're, they're extracted altogether, which is a great pity. Um, the, 
the open, uh, professional open access um, publisher, um, who I see is represented quite well here, is Open Journals by Aerosis. Um, they're doing great work. But then on the other hand, as has already been mentioned, um, there are some um, open access publishers that are on an international watch list of predator open access publishers. But, and academic journals is a prime example of that, but it's, do they really deserve that? I'm, I'm not sure that they do. Um, some of the journals that are, are published by academic journals are very fine, long-standing journals with impact factors and they, do, they contain superb research and they are superb publications. Um, yes, they're mushrooming many journals and probably too aggressively, but that, that is not necessarily an indication of their being um, predatory in the sense that, the, that this list would show. Um, I think that there's more exploration to be done there and possibly a mentoring role um, that is needed. Um, the, the Agile service itself is being used on the continent by quite a few universities um, as a measure of journal quality. So if, a, if a, an author from um, X department would like to get points for um, tenure or promotion, um, and they say they've had a, a, an article published in a journal that's on Agile that is actually regarded as fairly significant. We never set ourselves up to be um, a quality control service, but we are being used as such. Um, we are collectively, as a partnership of journals, attaining a huge amount of visibility for the formal, uh, formerly scholarly, scholarly published um, research from the continent. Um, the 2011 figures are much, much lower than this year. It's probably about half. Um, and there were two, two and a half million visits to the site, 6.6 .6 million PDFs downloaded from the open access journals alone. And 40% of the, the users are coming from the African continent. Um, very excitingly, there are some country level journal hosting platforms um, using open journal systems as well um, to start showcasing um, journals on a country level basis and HL is going to be cooperating with those closely. What we need to do as well is better showcase and share what is successfully being done. Um, I think that the, the under assessment of, of the content that is being produced and the work that is being done um, by the research um, sector and the whole continent is massively underestimated because we're not sharing and displaying it as well as we, sh we could and should be doing. And again, we need to collaborate better with other aggregators, with, with other um, organizations such as uh, some of the ones represented in this room. Um, often it seems that it's the smaller organizations, um, the ones with three full-time staff that are kind of reaching out to the bigger ones and saying, let's work together, let's co collaborate rather than the other way around. Um, we all need to work on that a bit more. Um, research partnerships, it would be fantastic to see more South-South research partnerships um, emerging for um, us to be able to um, have content reported on. Um, journal to journal partnerships are happening, the African Journal Partnership Project in health journals um, between a number of really prestigious UK and US um, health journals and some African journals is um, seemingly working very well. The South-South um, aggregator aspect of that is happening as well. Um, but possibly there is a role for publisher-publisher peer mentoring as well, as I mentioned briefly before, um, possibly with, with Biomed Central, possibly with Hindawi as a South-South initiative as well. That's it. I've rushed through it because I usually can't fit it all in, but I think I've done a pretty good job. <laughs>